Welcome. This short video is going to be a tutorial of how we use the Federal Reserve Economic Database to find data about the macroeconomy in the United States, to graph that data, and then to use that data to answer some questions. So I'm going to start with uh, signing in, and then we will pick some data series to look at, and then we will see how we can copy and paste a graph once we make it into the appropriate part in our course shell in Angel. So first I'm going to sign in. Now if you don't have an account you need to register which is very easy but I already have an account so I'm just going to sign in all up here in the upper right hand corner. So, signing in. And there we go. Okay. So here's my account, and the advantage of having an account is you can actually save data series that are your favorites, and so it's very easy to get to them. You can save graphs, you can save data lists in certain categories, and you can get notifications of when new data updates become available. So right now, we're going to create a graph using two of the um, variables that are indicated in your money banking textbook in Chiquetti um, on the consumer price index and the GDP deflator. We're going to look at their growth rates, i.e. the inflation rates, and compare the two and figure out how we use FRED to do that. So the first thing we want to do is look at the CPI. Here we are. So this CPI data series is one of the ones that um, you were given in Chiquetti's book. Okay, and if you see, the window pops up down here, and then I can say View Series and FRED. So the graph pops up, and with View Series and FRED, now I have a full screen of a graph of the Consumer Price Index. The default is to give you a graph of the entire time that the data is available. Um, in this case, we, let's look at just 10 years of data. All right, so I hit that 10-year mark. I also can customize it, as you can see, to look at any subset of the data that I want to. Now, this is the Consumer Price Index and Levels. What I would really like to know over the past 10 years is the growth rate of the Consumer Price Index because that is how we measure inflation. So what I do is I go to the Edit Data Series, I scroll down here, and Percentage Change from a Year Ago, and I generate an updated graph. So you can see that looks very different because that's the percentage change from a year ago in the Consumer Price Index, or in other words, the annual inflation rate at each point on this graph. And you can see as I scroll my mouse across, it actually gives me the observation at that particular point. So in August 2010, inflation was about 1.2% annually. Right. So now I have the Consumer Price Index. Now I'd like to add another data series to compare. So I'm going to go down to this Add Data Series, and I can look for data here. And so in this case, I want to look at the GDP deflator, which is another way we could measure inflation, GDP, DEF. Again, that data name and code is also in the textbook. Okay, so we have the GDP price deflator. I'm going to add the series. And we're going to generate a new graph that has both of the series on it. The nice thing about this, it actually automatically measures the GDP deflator and percentage change the same way the CPI is already measured, so they're comparable. So now we look at these two time series, and what do we see? Well, the GDP deflator is measured quarterly. The CPI is measured monthly, so the GDP deflator, the red line there, is, is going to be smoother than the blue line, um, just because of measurement. But also, the its consumer price index is clearly more volatile than the GDP deflator. We shouldn't expect them to be the same, because they do measure different things. The consumer price index is looking at prices of things that consumers buy. Gross domestic product is looking at changes in the prices of things we produce in the United States that are in our GDP. So there's no reason to expect them to be the same, but we would expect a positive correlation, and that's exactly what we see. So we see they move together, but they're in fact not the same. Now, suppose I want to save this graph so I can export it to another program. Namely, suppose I want to put it into Angel. So let's see. Let's go to Export here in this tab. right? And we can export it in several different file formats. You can even download the data of the graph as an Excel spreadsheet if you want. I'm going to export as a JPEG. And when I do that, it opens a new tab here, gives me the graph as a JPEG, and I'm just going to copy it. 
There you go. And now I'm going to go to Angel. So I'm over here in Angel, and I'm going to choose my money and banking course. So when you're in your money and banking course. So, for example, in our online money and banking course, what are we doing? We are going to, you're asked in discussion one, you're asked to post a graph. So let me, let's go to discussion one, using data to answer big questions. So now that I have that graph copied, so now I'm ready to make a post with my graph. Okay, so I scroll down, and here's my post, and I'm going to go and paste the graph. Notice the graph is huge. So one thing you'd like to do is you want to right click on the graph. I right click with my mouse. Image properties comes up. And I'm going to make this a little smaller. So if you make the, I found experimenting, if you, we make the width 750 pixels high, it's, um, it's, it's easier to look at. So I hit OK. And there we go. See, now we can all see it on one screen. And now I have the graph pasted in. And then I can actually, below, I can make a post and discuss what I see in that graph as directed by the discussion question. So really in a few simple steps we can get up-to-date economic data, we can graph it visually in a format that we can understand it, and we can make some observations and some analysis based on the graphs that we see.